Hello, my name's Brian Atkinson and welcome to UK Aircraft Explored. In this video, we shall cover the Avro Lancaster's canopy. We shall be referring to the wartime air ministry manuals that were used by ground crews at the time. I hope you find this interesting. Above the cutaway area of the front centre portion, and over almost all the roof, is the Lancaster's transparent canopy. The support for this comprises a die cast windscreen frame to which is bolted a welded steel tubular structure extending aft to form a one. The remaining portion of the frame is built up of spruce and fares into a hemispherical dome just forward of the end of the section. An inward opening direct vision window is fitted in each side of the windscreen and in each side of the canopy at the forward end is a sliding window. In the panel forward of Former 1 is an observation astrodome. The astrodome is provided at the aft end of the canopy for taking sextant readings and an anchorage for the navigator is attached to the floor just forward of the front spar step. The sextant is stowed on a panel at the forward end of the navigator's table. A torch, an Aldis signalling lamp, and a Gravner Hands fire extinguisher are also stowed on this panel. A blackout curtain for the navigator's station, which can be pulled down within 12 inches of the floor is fitted at the forward end of the fuselage roof below the canopy and a curtain is also provided in the astrodome. The direct vision windows are fitted on each side of the windscreen. They are hinged windows which may be opened for direct vision if the windscreen is obscured during taxiing etc. If the window frame is frozen, gradual unscrewing of the release knob will force the window inwards and will break the ice. In the rear portion of the canopy above the fuselage is mounted a direction finding or DF loop. It is fitted in conjunction with two visual indicators one above the wireless operator's window and the other above the pilot's instrument panel. There are three push-out type emergency exits fitted in the roof of the fuselage, one just forward of the rear spar and one above the rear end of the main floor and one in the canopy above the pilot. They should not be used as parachute exits. When the aircraft is parked for any length of time, covers are provided for the engines, turrets and the canopy, as shown in this diagram. Window de-icing is provided by means of a glycol spray for the pilot's windscreen and also the bomb aimer's window. The system comprises a supply tank, two Rotax force feed hand pumps and small diameter delivery pipes. Standard de-icing fluid is used. A glycol tank of welded aluminium sheet of approximately four gallons capacity is mounted in the fuselage nose on the starboard side of the floor. It is also used as a step when passing from the air bomber's compartment into the pilot's cockpit. The pilot's pump is mounted on the wooden ring bolted to the pilot's floor on the port side and that of the bomb aimer on the port side of the fuselage nose. 
the pump is operated by pressing down the handle, which is returned by a spring at a varying rate according to the setting on the needle valve at the outlet. A setting of one and two thirds turns is recommended. When operated once a minute, the pump delivers fluid at the rate of two pints an hour. When not in use, the pump handle is held down by a stirrup catch and its action begins when the catch is released. Here are views of the de-icing spray nozzles fitted in front of the pilot's windscreen. At the bomb aimer's window, a perforated pipe is fitted round the upper part of the frame and spreads the fluid over the whole external surface. The pipe for the windscreen divides and forms two nozzles above the upper skin of the fuselage nose, arranged to direct the spray onto the windscreen. No jet is formed, but the fluid is dribbled from the nozzle and flung onto the windscreen by the airstream. The hand pumps for the windscreen and bomb aimer's window de-icing require to be primed if they have been drained in the course of maintenance or from any other cause. Well that's it for this video, I hope you found it interesting. If you like what I do on this channel, please click the like button and consider subscribing. And also click the bell, remember it's free and you'll receive notification when my future videos are posted. Thanks as always for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.